Join us at the Cross-Contamination Learning Station, another educational biobrief brought to you by Handsome Unlimited, where our core values are to better the lives of dental patients. For today's short biobrief, we have a full agenda prepared. The goal by the end of this biobrief is to help dentists to spread the word that when visiting the dentist, patients are in a clean and safe environment. Without proper infection control, a dental clinic would be shut down. This biobrief will focus on infection control and patient safety in the dental clinic. Concerns about the possible spread of diseases, developing highly contagious respiratory infections, and other illnesses are growing daily. Dentists and other healthcare workers have a clear responsibility to establish, evaluate, and continually update their infection control strategies and protocols. Do you ever go to the dentist and ask questions about infection control? It is your right to ask these questions and the dentist's obligation to tell you the truth. But is just answering yes to these questions enough to satisfy your concerns? Let's elaborate. Dental professionals wash their hands or sanitize before putting on gloves. Their hands are always clean before starting treatment. The dental room or the dental operatory is cleaned and disinfected between each patient using a special high level dental certified disinfectant solution. Anytime a patient is seen by a dental professional, new instruments are being used, meaning the instruments have gone through a verified sterilization process using chemical and biological testing to ensure sterility. Germs are a part of everyday life and they are everywhere. Instead of being afraid, let's be educated. This image demonstrates the chain of infection. All six of these elements that make up the chain of infection are needed in order to spread an infection. By removing even just one of these elements, an infection cannot occur. The three most important elements that require the most attention are the infectious agent, which is the harmful germ, a mode of transmission, which is how the harmful germ can spread, and we need a susceptible host, which could be a child or an elderly person or somebody with an immunocompromised disease. There are many germs that live in and on our bodies without causing harm. Only a small portion of germs are known to cause infection. But to err on the side of safety, we need to understand different ways for germs to be transmitted. Direct contact is when a person touches another person. For example, a simple handshake. Indirect contact is when there is an existing germ on a surface that is ingested by someone else. Droplet and airborne contact is when somebody speaks and spits or when somebody sneezes and it's ingested by someone else. So how can this be prevented? Cross-contamination is a term defined as an accidental or unintentional transfer of bacteria from one surface to another. Cross-contamination is usually due to unsanitary handling during procedures. Better explained, cross-contamination is a spread of microorganisms from one source to another. As dental professionals, it is a main goal to prevent cross-contamination. Dental professionals understand that some people may not have a diagnosis or yet have developed symptoms of certain diseases. Dentists will follow infection control protocol on all patients. That being said, dental professionals are trained to treat patients with the same cleaning, disinfection, sterilization, and personal sanitization techniques. The standard term for treating all patients the same is universal precaution. There are many principles that make up universal precaution. The three we will focus on include risk assessment, which is an assessment done on each patient to determine the risk involved with the procedure being performed and the likelihood of exposure to blood or other bodily fluids. 
Hand hygiene is the next one. The use of gloves does not replace the need for hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is necessary before and after procedures, any time the dental professional leaves or enters the room, and any time they are in doubt. Needless to say, hand hygiene is very important and it's done very frequently. And of course the third is PPE, which is worn by all dental professionals for protection from exposure to potentially infectious material. This protects patients as well. By us changing our PPE with every single patient that is treated, we are preventing cross-contamination. The term best practices is used when professional procedures that are accepted as being correct or most effective are being performed. This video demonstrates how to properly wash your hands according to best practices from the World Health Organization. Please note that for the purpose of this bio brief, the video was condensed. Hand washing should always take approximately 40 to 60 seconds. Let's drill deeper into cross-contamination. What if saliva were red? We cannot always see cross-contamination, but that does not mean that it's not there. It is best practices to deliver universal precaution because if saliva and other microorganisms were red, for example, cross-contamination would be visible, making it easy to clean. If we can see the mess, we can clean the mess. But because saliva and other microorganisms are not visible, we must clean, disinfect, and sterilize absolutely everything each patient comes into contact with. In doing this, we can ensure patient safety. The truth is, we are influenced to believe that the coronavirus is everywhere. And that may be true, but we wanna reassure you that each province have their own rules and regulations on dental infection control. Each province has implemented new, updated and COVID friendly infection control guidelines to increase patient safety. These guidelines are constantly being updated and followed. Did you know that some clinics are already up and running for emergency and urgent cases? Cleaning, disinfection and sterilization. These three terms are sometimes interchanged but have completely different meanings. We can see clean, but we cannot see sterilized. Would you agree with this statement? When it comes to cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization, each step is more important than the last. But what's most important is that no steps are missed. Cleaning physically removes rather than kills microorganisms. Disinfection is achieved through the use of chemical agents. Disinfection falls between physical cleaning and sterilization. Sterilization is a validated process that kills all pathogenic microorganisms, including bacteria, fungus, viruses, and spores. By following universal precaution, best practices, and cleaning, disinfection, and sterilization, we are eliminating the chances of cross-contamination. How often are instruments sterilized? This is a very common question that dental professionals come across. All instruments used in dentistry are available in heat tolerant or single use forms. Anytime an instrument is exposed to a patient, it will either be sterilized or thrown out. As mentioned earlier in the bio brief, of course it is safe to visit the dentist. Dental professionals as a team will follow infection control according to provincial standards. It is best not to be afraid of the coronavirus, but instead, let's be educated. Understand how the coronavirus is passed from one person to another and work around it by wearing PPE or asking questions. Try not to let your oral health suffer for fear of COVID-19. Dental professionals are taking COVID very seriously 
and will be sure to keep you safe. With all this talk about cross-contamination through airborne and droplet transferring, the dental clinic is considered high risk. But rest assured that all infection control measures are being taken to the maximum. Hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly checks are in place to reduce risks in the dental clinic. Your oral health should not suffer due to fear of dental clinics. Dental professionals are highly trained on infection prevention and control. How are dental professionals preventing the spread of infection? Precaution is very important here. Dental professionals are constantly aware of infection control. PPE is being changed between every single patient. Gloves especially are changed each time a dental professional leaves the room. Hands are constantly being washed. Dental professionals use a high level disinfection on each environmental surface, including front desk and waiting areas. Products that are scientifically proven to work against the human coronavirus are being used in every single operatory each time a patient is dismissed. These measures are key for prevention of spreading infection. So what's the takeaway message from this infection control biobrief? Infection prevention and control is a critically important part of safe patient care. So don't forget to ask questions to your dental professional if you feel unsafe or unsure. You are safe at the dentist. Thank you to best practices and universal precaution. That's all for today. Thank you all for listening. We hope you learned something new. Please check in soon for more educational videos brought to you by Handsome Ed Limited.